warmer. I need to turn the camera on as far as it's like. Stickers. I didn't have the camera tilted last time, so I think got it tilted so you guys can see the stickers. Uh, lots of construction. I think you're going to hear jackhammers, chainsaws in the background. It's crazy. It used to be a quiet neighborhood. I don't know what happened. Bar Z Bash coming up next weekend. Unfortunately, I can't attend. I was looking forward to it. But um, Pierre's garage, Pierre's flying down from Canada. He'll attend it, and then we've been talking, and he's interested in stopping by the shop. So he'll drive down here and take a look at the shop. So I'll probably take some of that. That'll be fun. So um, Travers catalog, crazy. Been going through it. I'm up to page 1,140, and I'm a little over halfway. Um, if you don't can't find it in this catalog, it doesn't exist. And I'm also finding that. There's things in here I didn't know existed, so it's this is really cool, man. You guys get a hold of Travers, get yourself one of the master catalogs, especially the larger. You guys Han Lift and Adam Booth, uh, the big machine shops. You guys need the catalog if you don't have one. It's in crazy. Um, still working on the flame engine back here. Um, ordered a set of T boring measuring guys, you know, gauges, so I can kind of check and see if the bore in the cylinder is right, because I want to get it so that the cylinder is not a question as to whether that's a problem or not, because I know the valve that slides is not, but that's absolutely seals perfect, so. Um, tail stock on the new lathe. Still working with problems. You know, I know everybody's trying to figure out how to do a better adjustment for centering it. This guy I saw, I was using it, it's way too low. Um, eight thousands, maybe ten, something, I don't know. But I started looking at Google Images on how the bigger machines adjust for centering. And I think I have an idea, but I want to keep working on the thought. And so hopefully, maybe I can come up with something better than we all have, you know, because I did that on the old one, saw that big thing on the back of the tailstock to pull it back and forth. So, uh, started another project. My neighbor decided to replace his front door, which is solid mahogany, so I'm starting to make a nice gun stock here for my gun back there. That stock I made when I was probably less than 10 years old, and I have no idea how I did it redwood so it was easier to do this is solid mahogany <laughs> I've got a ton of it down there just chainsaw this whole door up and put it in the garage so and one last thing just for anybody interested icon makes um, it's a scanner radio I don't know what you want to call it but it picks up everything except the cellular so if you want to listen to short wave um, police, you name it, they're all over eBay. I stole this one for 80 bucks. Normally they're 120, some are 200. It's an ICOM IC R5 or the R6. Both of them are really the same radio. Uh, I can go into Costco and listen to what they're doing there. I mean, you name it, you can listen to it. So onward and upward, I'll show you guys machining this little flywheel guy. How I bring it to a mirror finish, blah blah blah. So here we go. Well, first things first, grab the material. Free piece of brass that I was given with the new lathe. Cut it off. Look at how fast this thing goes. I love it. I'm still using the aluminum setting number four as far as speed on the bandsaw. Good old three jaw chuck. I just did maintenance, so it's all super cleaned up. Took it completely apart. Scroll out all of it. Makes a big difference to the feel. It feels like a piece of machinery when you're done. Changing to the other set of jaws. 
and I guess everybody knows there's stamped in the check is one two three stamped on the jaws one two three so you know exactly where they go piece of brass goes in there clamp it down nice and square the saw cuts it off really square which is great using my aluminum insert you notice too I've sped up some of these videos rather than regular speed it's double speed 200 percent in it goes and starting to take the final cut on that side no matter what you do you're going to have lines in it because it's there's just the slightest slightest micro ten less than ten thousandth movement in the saddle as you crank it and you're going to see lines in there so but i it's absolutely smooth to the finger you can't feel a thing so this is kind of I, a lot of people ask me how I got the finish. This is um, 3000 grit here. And I'm just quickly rubbing back and forth, back and forth, trying to get rid of some of the lines that are in it. Now I'm searching for finer, probably going to 5000 grit paper. Yep, there. Oh yeah, that's the 5,000 grit. It isn't paper, it's more like foam. Gets rid of a few more lines, gets it a little bit nicer finish to it. And here's where I start doing the boring. Same thing I did with the, not boring, yeah, I guess it's boring. The same thing I did with the larger flywheel. And this is just chatter city, no matter what you do. I'm actually going in as I go across to get it deeper. I just go back and forth and keep running the compound in to get it deeper until it gets to the point where it's just ridiculous chatter because it's going to start flattening out the Gibbs screws. Very painful process. And here's where I come in because that was a rounded cutter. When you hit the extremes, now you've got more contact surface area and so the chatter gets worse. So I come in with a boring tool, real small guy at an angle, and clean up both sides. I'll do this edge and then I'll put it in reverse and I'll go and clean up the centerpiece doing it on the other side. You can see the chatter. At this point I'm saying this is ridiculous, I'm not doing this again. So I'm just going to finish off the other side, sit down, and try to figure out a better way of doing this thing. And there's a better way of doing it. The rotary table. Bring the camera around. This sucker is heavy too. Anybody that doesn't have a rotary table, it is a great piece of machinery to own an instrument. Keep your eye out looking for it. I know people on eBay all of a sudden they're selling something they don't know, we don't know what it is. A friend of mine picked up a $400 Tapmatic for $25. So keep your eye open for a rotary table. They're great. Edge finder, quickly find the center hole. Get this thing on center. So when you rotate it, you're rotating about rotational center. and use the other edge finder because it's got a nice point on it just get it straight trying to find the center hole that was put in the flywheel here from the lathe clamps I made a whole set of clamps a long time ago for this rotary table different heights so that I can easily pick one pick one set and clamp anything I want down and there it is the new end mill the three point three flute and you just go around and around and get yourself dizzy watching it. <laughs> One point my fingers were getting so tired that I just took the handle off the table and put 
the drill on it, a cordless drill, just chuck it up and let it go. And center cutting, so I can just go around one revolution, drop it down, go around another, drop it down. Then eventually move the table uh, Y axis so I can come in for cleanup cuts. This is so much easier, so much faster than doing it on the lathe. and decided to chamfer it while it was there, why not? I don't know why I'm stopping here, I must be doing it by hand again. But go one way, climb milling with the cutter, move it out, go the other direction with the cutter to climb mill the other side. Must be using the drill here because it, eh, it stops. I don't know. Getting dizzy just watching this video. And there it is. What I want to make sure is that I've cut it far enough that I can get it in the chuck. So I. The four inch, it won't fit. This is the original one that came with the mill. And I'm discovering that the thickness I just showed with my fingers, the thickness of the jaws are different between the chuck that came with the old lathe and the new lathe. So the chuck, this is the one for the new lathe, thinner, and it just happens to fit. So I'll be able to do more finishing in the lathe on this thing. And zooming in so you can just kind of see what it looks like still has some lines you can see in the outside face so and this is how I get the finish lap it this is a granite piece that I got at a estate sale for a couple of dollars and 3000 grit paper and you just it's so fine that it clogs up you have to use water to keep the sandpaper clean and you just keep going back and forth until every single line is gone And it doesn't really take that long. It goes pretty quick. Like I said, I'm surprised how flat granite surfaces are. One video I did showed, you know, it's it's really flat. And there it is. A few little 3,000 grit sand marks, lines, which are going to come right out. I wind up just putting it back in the lathe and I use the 5000 grit and all of a sudden you've got a mirror finish.